Hey guys, it's Robin Arslan Crafts and welcome to my craft room. This is my Whip It Wednesday video where I show you what's been happening in the craft room this week. I went a little crazy with zipper pouches again. Well, controlled crazy because I only have six of them here and there are times when I try to make 15 or 20 of them. But we made the front zipper pouch on our last tutorial. I have those in a few different sizes and different fabrics. And I was also working on them over on the Patreon channel and I made these two. I'm actually going to keep these two. I really like this fabric. I like the pink and the green together. I just, it's a nice combination that I enjoy. I think I would really like to have a quilt that has that together on it. So pouch madness is over. I do enjoy making pouches and I'm probably going to, well, I know I'm going to keep making pouches as time goes on. I like trying out different shapes and styles and stuff. I found that this is a super quick one. It just whips up so fast that it's great for those last minute gifts or if you just need something to organize your purse real quick or your backpack or your gym bag or whatnot. <coughs> I also started working on this quilt again. There's always just random safety pins. I haven't laid it out and checked each little spot, but I always seem to find them. I haven't trimmed this up yet, and that's usually when I find all the random safety pins. But I made this one, I think, over the summer. You guys have seen it before. It has all the novelty prints on it done in like little strip sets. I've got six two and a half inch squares to make a 12 and a half inch block. Then you just flip flop them all the way around. I did do a pieced border. I used similar fabrics, if not the same. And I just went with a six inch strip because that's how wide my longest ruler is. So these are all going this way and just, I cut it down the center-ish and I just put a couple more strips in because I needed it to be wider. This I believe is about 48 by 60 before I trim it up. So with the fabric, wasn't gonna cut it. I thought about making larger squares. Like I th thought maybe I'd have to divide it out to see what 48 would get me. But of course I could do 12 and a half inch squares. But then I realized, okay, it's going to be extra piecing. Yes, I didn't have a problem with that. But cutting out the squares, it was easier just to cut a strip out than it was to cut squares. So that's what I went with this. I really love, I love what I call Crayola colors. Just your basic bright colors. And of course, Dr. Seuss is well known for those. So I love this strip of Dr. Seuss fabric. It's also on the front. I think this quilt will be a fun little I Spy quilt matching it up. Great for the little ones. And I would even cozy up underneath this. I have no problem. I love all the different colors in the fabrics. But, okay, so my next, my next step is to trim this up and get the binding on it. So I'm going to finish that up today or tomorrow. So this can go, this is actually gonna go out into the mail. This is being sent to a friend. Okay, before I show you what else I've worked on, if you're one of my patrons and you're expecting a little surprise from me and you want it to still be a surprise, you might want to go ahead and just skip past this for a little bit, you know, go two to five minutes ahead. So if you don't want to see what it is, but if you don't mind seeing it ahead of time and you don't care if you're surprised or not, go ahead and keep watching. But this one is for you. So this is going out to one of my patrons as one of their rewards. I am making a lap quilt. You guys have seen this earlier. I worked on this during the summer, had it hanging up against the white fence out back. Just, I made my own little two and a half inch jelly roll type strips and I sewed six of them together to make a 12 and a half inch block. And then I just went ahead and flip flopped them. And this is going to be, before I trim it up, it's 48 by 60. Sometimes, you know, it gets a little bit smaller when you trim it. Sometimes it grows a little when you quilt it. I wanted to do some free motion quilting on this, but I couldn't seem to get all the body parts working together to get the free motion going. So I just did a whole bunch of straight lines. 
I went ahead and put my walking foot and just went and put it right next to one of the seams here and then just stitched all the way along. I let it kind of flow organically through the next block because there was nothing to follow and then just picked it up on that side. And then I also did some straight lines this way and I just split the block down the center on each of the 12 and a half inch squares. This cotton batting allows me to do my quilting 10 inches apart. So well, I've already got it apart here about two inches, two and a half inches, and then six inches down the centers, it's going to be perfectly fine. I did do a pieced border on the back of this. I was thinking I was gonna do some 12 and a half inch squares to kind of match to the ones on the front, like take a 12 and a half inch square of each of the fabrics I used on the front, but it just seems so much easier to cut strips versus squares. So I took my long ruler, which is a six inch ruler, and I just went ahead and I cut a bunch of strips. I cut my six and a half, my six inch strips to be sewn in at five and a half inches. And I cut enough of them to, you know, put a little bit past the total length of the quilt. So you have that little wiggle room. Since I'm cutting the strip of fabric by the, uh, the width of fabric, I didn't, it was 40, you know, 40 to 42 inches, which isn't enough. So I went ahead and I cut a couple extra strips, sewn them end to end. I took the back of the quilt and split it just about in half. Basically, I folded it in half this way, pinned it all together, and just took my scissors and cut straight down. I added these strips in. I think I ended up using four fabrics and then just put them. Some of them are a little bit shorter than the other because, of course, I only needed 60 inches, not the full 40 and 40. But I like the way this split up like that also. So I'm going to go and get this all trimmed up today or tomorrow. And then I have to make the binding. And again, I'm just gonna take random two and a half inch strips and sew them all together and put that binding on. So some of the fabrics that were used on the front are used on the back. There may be some random ones that like, I don't think I put this one on the front, but it is on the back. I think it's gonna be a really fun little I Spy type quilt. I love the way these just happen to work out so you get the heads of the frogs through here. So that happened in a few places just because of the way it was all lined up. So that worked out really well. I don't think I did that on purpose. I think that was just a happy coincidence. I really love the Dr. Seuss fabric because it has what I call Crayola colors. I like just the basic colors, you know, your simple rainbow colors. I love all color, but I like the ones that I'm drawn to the basic bright ones that just come out of the Crayola box. Maybe not so much the brown, right? So I worked on this over the weekend. I had to piece all the back and got it all quilted. I did try to do a little free motion quilting, but I just couldn't seem, first of all, I forgot to put the feed dogs down. So I had quilted a whole section here and had to take that out. Then I tried it again and I just couldn't quite get the motion going. So I decided instead of struggling and having something I don't like or having to pick out I already picked this out two, three times. I didn't want to pick it out of an entire quilt. I just went with a straight line quilting and I think that's going to be perfectly fine. The quilt will still get all crinkly and everything like that once I pop it through the wash, so it's going to be fine. You'll see that one more time before it gets put into the mail. So I did have something really exciting happen this week. There's nothing on my knitting needle. The yarn is not attached to anything. Now that was my major excitement this week. I finally finished a newsprint cowl from Pearl Soho. The last time you saw it, I was right here. So I went ahead and finished all that off. I kind of worked a little bit later today. I like to record in the morning, but it's now in the afternoon because I wanted to make sure I got this cowl finished. This, you might not have been able to tell when it was on the needles, but there's like 385 thereabouts give or take a few stitches on here and it's one of those long cowls that you can double up so you can have a nice snuggly cowl like that i did knit it in the front i've told you guys this before but in case someone knew or you don't remember i knit it with it facing me this way but you actually wear it around so this side now of course you can wear it any way you want right This does need to have a nice little bath and just kind of either get pinned and stretched out or just laid nice and flat. 
and get everything so it just lays nicely. Once it gets wet, you'll be able to stretch it out and do that. But that's what my friend takes care of that. That's our deal. She supplies the yarn. I do all the knitting, but she has to do all the blocking and the washing. That way she can use any of the, they have a lot of, I almost said smelly, but they have a lot of scented wool washes and stuff. So whatever scent you want to have on your, your woolen item that's going to be especially around your neck. You don't want me to just use something that you don't like. I mean, I might use coconut and you don't like coconut. So I'll allow her to go ahead and get that washed up, but I'll be putting that in the mail. It does have a nice little stretch and I think it's going to, yeah, it stretches nicely this way too. So she'll be able to wrap that around. As I said, it'll stop curling once it's all washed and stuff like that, but she keeps showing it the right way. For whatever reason, the last few years, having things inside out has become very popular. I like to see all the little stitches going this way, but some people like to see the pearl side. So I've got this off the needles that I'm really, I'm really, really, really excited to have this done. And now all I gotta do, my last commitment to finish up is Robbie's Christmas socks. And then I can start working on my sweaters. There is a lot of the darker, the black. It almost, because the yarn has a bit of a halo, it gets kind of fuzzy looking. I don't know if you can, see it's kind of like just, it has a little bit of a fuzz on it. So the cream brown color, you know, gets fuzzed up and goes onto the black. So it makes the black look more brown, but I believe it's an actual black. This yarn is, Pearl Soho line weight. It's 100% merino wool. This is wheat flour. I can take the darker color out now that I'm going to be sending it back. And this one is soft black. There you go. Color 2000 and color 1010. Oh, it's a heather. So yeah, so that's why you're getting all that on there like that. So I thought that was really nice. This was, this, this did take me a year plus, right? Because it was just, it wasn't just as much as the knitting round and round on really thin yarn because it's not very thick at all. I believe I used a size, what do these needles call for? A size one to four needle. I believe I did mine with a size four needle. So it has that nice flow to it and you don't want anything that's too super tight but it was the changing the color like you do one row of black and then you do two rows of the cream and you have to constantly change the color and you have to try to do your best to keep it neat on the inside so just in case it shows or you know they decide they want to wear it the other way around you want to have it looking really nice So you won't be seeing this anymore. This is the last item that I was um, on my list this year for my friend. We'll see what happens next year. But I do want to finish off Robbie's socks. I have another pair of socks. Robbie has a friend that would like a pair of socks. So I'm going to knit her some next year. But his come first because his need to be done for Christmas. And I really want to start working on my cranberry sweater. So I will go ahead and sneak myself in there somewhere along the line. So I think I've gone ahead and earned a little bit of time for knitting for myself, but now I won't have to worry about falling asleep at night while knitting on this. I could fall asleep while knitting something else. That's everything that happened in the craft room this week. I've got nothing really super exciting to tell you, but I do have something to show you that came in the mail this week. I received this adorable Santa guy. He's got a jingle, he's got that lacy ribbon on it, and I like the little see-through type ribbon, but he is quilted up nicely. I, I believe like you could put him on a soda bottle or probably a wine bottle, right? But he's just so cute. Look, he's got his little belt on there with a little black belt going on. He's got the little leaves and got little feet on it and everything. So he is all quilted up nice and pretty like. See all the way down and see all the fun colors that she used. She used a variegated thread, so it kind of changed into all kinds of colors. I think this is just really cute. So he's going to be going out now. I'm going to start hanging up decorations for Christmas. I live alone. I have to dig Christmas out of the closet. So first I have to motivate for that. And once I dig it out, I'm going to go ahead and start putting it up. I think I want to wait on my tree until after. I use an artificial tree so I can put it up whenever I want. But I think I'm going to go ahead and wait on the tree until after Thanksgiving or closer to it. I mean, 
today's what, the 18th? So Thanksgiving is a week from tomorrow. So it's not like it's very far away, right? So by the time I get motivated and get everything out, I can go ahead and start putting everything up. I say I'm holding off a little on the tree because I need to make sure I put it in a place where the cats can't get it because a couple of them like to just chew on the artificial branches of it. And since I'm only using a, you purchase a four foot tree, but really almost a whole foot of it is just that tall branch at the top that you have to bend over in half anyways to put your topper on or your star or whatever. So basically I've got about a three, three and a half foot tree. I like to put it up on like a table, maybe one of those TV dinner trays, those wooden tables like. That usually works out pretty good for me and that way I can place it where I want and try to keep it a little bit away from the cats. I thought about putting it here. I thought about just putting the tree here in my craft room, but then I, I really enjoy seeing, I like to turn off the lights at night while I'm watching TV and just have the lights from the tree on. Just that, that calming, relaxing bit of the Christmas tree lights, especially sometimes I just put all blue ones on and sometimes I do with the colored ones and let them twinkle and stuff. I'll have to pull out and see what I have in the box because you know Christmas was a whole year ago and I really wasn't quite thinking straight about decorating and everything last year, but I want to start putting some stuff up this year. So that's it for me this week. This week coming up, I know you guys, I, I make it plenty confusing for you all that I go live on the first and third Saturday of the month, which means the 21st is the third Saturday and we are going to be doing pillowcases. We're probably, I know we're gonna at least do the French seam pillowcases. I don't know if I'll do a regular standard pillowcase that you can like surge. We'll see what you guys all want. If you guys wanna have both versions, it's really easy to whip through a pillowcase and get it all stitched up so it doesn't take very long for that so we should have plenty of time to do both but the thing with the lives is i want to let you know that when you come on a friday video if the friday video is like a tutorial like i showed you guys how to do the pouches this past week then you know that saturday is not going to be a live i'm trying my best and i think it's always going to be that way said if i have a live on saturday i will put up a video on friday letting you know the supplies that you're going to need so if you want to sew along with me so that way, if you find any hiccups along the way, you can stop and ask me right then to backtrack and redo a section or something like that. People in the comments can help you all out. But I want you guys to have your supplies ahead of time. So you'll know on Friday if it's a live stream supply list that I'm going to go live the next day. If you're getting a regular tutorial, then don't even worry about looking for me on that Saturday because I won't be live. So anytime I'm going to do a live, unless it's just a surprise, you will get to know the day ahead of time. So thanks for hanging out with me today and every day that you come out and hang out with me at my channel. If you enjoy seeing videos like this or you just want to see the tutorials, please think about hitting that subscribe button, like this video, and if you ring that little notification bell, YouTube will mostly tell you when something's coming up. If you hit all notifications, they do let you know. They no longer, YouTube no longer sends out emails when new videos come up. So you either have to set it up on your phone or on your computer or however, but you will get notification down on the YouTube page under your little notification tab. So at least then you'll see what's going on that day, right? All right, so thanks for hanging out with me and I will see you guys this weekend. Bye.